Hey there, it's Dr. Scott McLean, and this is what I call the Dallas Experiment. We're going to be comparing two screws, and this came up as a follow-up from some great questions when I was in Dallas last weekend. We can see the on-4 prosthetic screw versus the on-1 prosthetic screw. We're going to check at what point do these screws fracture when you're torquing them. So we're going to be pushing these screws beyond their limits and uh, checking out one versus the other because they are similar, but they still are very different. So we're going to go back to what we learned in uh, dental school about stress-strain curves. We know there's an elastic region and a plastic region and then fracture. So we're going to bring the screws beyond the elastic limit, going into the plastic deformation area, and then intentionally fracture these to see at what point they fracture. Now we'll have a closer look at these screws before we start the test. And what you'll see is that the multi-unit zeal screw is an on four prosthetic screw. And this is used during on four uh, temporization and also final placement of bridges in three different types of uh, abutments. But we're gonna use the straight abutment today. Then we'll also look at the on one zeal abutment screw, which is more used for singles. And this is an engaging type of abutment so we're going to compare these two screws, which you can see are very different in how the head is formed and also in terms of how the uh, abutment screw is a little bit uh, thicker on the on one screw. So let's see what happens when we test these. I used some gypsum to place a replica in to do our testing of the screw torque. So let's have a look at the abutments themselves and see how they're the same and how they're differing because they do look a lot the same when we look at them. Uh, just at a quick glance. You'll see that the yellow handle on the top is actually the multi-unit abutment where the on one is the one with the gray handle. So if we look at the top abutment a bit closer, we can see it's actually a non-engaging type of abutment. So the abutment screw at the level of the implant is actually part of the abutment itself. So this screws in with the multi-unit driver where if we look at it really close, we can see that it's got a conical connection but no hex where we can see on the on one there's actually a hex and the screw goes through and actually makes it so that it's going to be tightened into the implant so it has an anti-rotational effect with the abutment uh, hex so here we go let's start with the multi-unit abutment first we're going to take this and screw it into the replica and then hold it with the vice grip on the base so that we can cause uh, some torque on this uh, implant. So the, the abutment itself, we're gonna do manufacturer's recommendation, which is to take a multi-unit driver, which you can see right here, which is part of your prosthetic kit, and then go in and then tighten down that multi-unit to 35 Newtons. So the straight abutments tighten to 35 Newtons, where the angled abutments, the 17 and the 30 abutments, tighten actually to 15 Newtons on the screws. So you can see I can tighten this to 35, and this would be what the manufacturer would re recommend. Our goal is to make this very similar to what it's going to be like in the mouth when we're tightening down an implant bridge or putting on a temporary bridge and so some type of titanium bar. So this screw, when it goes in, is intended to tighten to 15 newtons. So we're going to hand tighten it down and not go too tight. And then we're going to use the torque wrench. So here we go. Let's take the torque wrench and we'll try this out. So what you kind of saw here was as I started to tighten we're in the elastic limit when we're up to 15 newtons and then as we go past the point that the manufacturer recommends at some point we're going to get into plastic deformation so the screw is starting to change and as I'm tightening it, you actually don't get past a certain level because the screw is stretching and getting elongated. And then we're going to reach the point of fracture, which then the, let, the screw lets go. So here we go right here. We can see, boom, the screw let go. 
So now we can feel that the screw is just not connected whatsoever. And so as I take it out, the head of the screw is still on the driver. If I look into the abutment, you can see that the screw is now fractured in the abutment. And so this is just not what we want to have happening. So the screw is at uh, about 45 newtons that it fractured. And so it fractured by having a screw head fracture. And we now have a screw stuck in the abutment. Now to get this out, you can take it against your glove. And since it's not under tension, you can put a little bit of light pressure and screw it counterclockwise. And what you'll find is that many times that little piece of screw can come out and you can salvage that abutment. Because it's sometimes hard to get this out in the mouth. So you take it out of the mouth to do this. It's then wise to check your abutment to make sure it's not damaged. So you can see that the threads aren't damaged inside, but we could have done some damage by over torquing. So we want to make sure sometimes to change these out anyway. So if we take the on one abutment and put it in, it's actually going to engage. And then the, as we turn the gray handle, a screw is going down through the abutment. So the abutment is not actually turning. It's just the screw turning. So the on one system is different than what we've used just recently. So looking down inside now, we can see that the on one abutment will be sitting in the tissue level uh, for putting on a final crown. So as we put this abutment on, we're going to then tighten the screw down to 35 newtons, which is the manufacturer's recommended screw torque. So we'll use the latch on one driver, and this driver has a black line, which you can see on the top. So that black line is the top one, and so the multi-unit would not really work well here. We're also going to use two torque drivers because we may get a little bit too much torque required here. So we're going to start with the lower torque wrench, and this torque wrench goes from a torque of uh, 15 at measure, then 35, and also at about 40, <clears throat> 45. And you can see that as we do this, we're tightening down the abutment to the manufacturer's recommended 35 Newton torque. And so as we get there, this is going to be our preparatory stage for uh, testing our screw. So to test this, we're going to use a cylinder, which is uh, going to simulate an abutment. So we're going to use the actual prosthetic screw, which is the on one prosthetic screw. And this is a zeal abutment, not that that really matters for this test, but we'll tighten the screw down and this screw is now a 35 newton centimeter screw. So rather than the 15 on the multi-unit, this screw is a more robust screw, a little bit bigger and it has a V, a kind of a V kind of shape at the, underneath the head of the screw. So as we tighten this down with the first driver, we're going right to 35 newtons and there's nothing really happening to this screw. We can feel that it feels very normal. I don't feel any slippage. I don't feel any kind of deformation, which I could definitely feel on the other screw. Now we're going to switch to the gold torque wrench, which is part of the Noble Active Surgical Kit. And this one, you can see that at 45, we can go 35, 45, and then 70. It's not really, nothing's happening to the screw. But then as we go a little bit higher, something's starting to happen. I can start to feel that deformation again. And so here we go. We'll push it, keep pushing, and boom, there's the, the brake. So as I took this off, I could, I was quite surprised because I couldn't get the abutment off and I really didn't know what was going on here at first. But as I looked inside and tried to find the head of the screw, I just couldn't find it. And so it was quite funny because I went back and tried to see if I could tighten it and, and find that engaging part of the Isn't screwdriver. But uh, little did I know something else had happened and Actually, the deformation happened on the screwdriver. So we can see that the screwdriver is what damaged here, not the screw. So I was quite surprised that the on one screw was so strong. It is actually the fatigue point was the screwdriver and not the head of the screw. So I don't, still don't know how much torque it takes to take the head of that oh, wow. uh, screw off, but I really don't need to know because it's well above where I have to go with the 35 Newtons. So. <laughs> I feel comfortable so that this screw is holding my abutment on. And uh, now we could do the torque test, but it's above, like the plastic limit is above what I'm going to at this point. So if I compare the screwdriver on the left, which is the one that just fractured 
with one that was out of my kit, you can see that the tip is missing, but also the little blades on the driver itself have been turned and twisted. So there's been plastic deformation before fracture of the driver in the head of the screw. So the driver is still in the head of the screw. And we're going to take an x-ray and have a look at that in a second. Now on the x-ray, you can see the head of the driver inside of the head of the screw. So, you know, this is where the piece fractured off. It's shown in white. But you also notice that the screw goes into the implant. So this is a screw into the implant, and then the other screw goes to the back of that. So if we look at the two screws, they're very different from one another. One's a bit bigger. One has a V type of area down on the top of the screw. And they're different systems. So if we look back at what we have had uh, on this experiment, these are rotational forces, so not lateral forces, but on rotational forces, one screw does appear to be stronger than the other screw, and so you can see that the on one screw is quite a bit stronger, and even if you torque above the elastic limit, it was the driver that kind of uh, went. Where the uh, other screw, which I've had a lot of experience uh, doing all in four with it, which doesn't tend to fracture, I see that it's actually very strong even though it's a smaller prosthetic screw. So obviously you have to do a, a number of screw tests. This is very anecdotal, but it does show some kind of properties of the screw one to the other. And anyway, this is Dr. Scott McLean, and this has been a YouTube video about implant dentistry.